can we give it up for the husband and wife duo? Come on now. Hey, you know what? Can I was about to say something about, not the husband, but something similar to that. Like, because if you think about it, a lot of great people are named, like their name is the product. Mm -hmm. Or their name is the company. Yeah. How you had just said it. Let's, so, let's give it up for the husband and wife being helpmates. Shots, react, react, and we're, we're back with, with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today we are back with another American reaction. Yes. We're super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and we're, we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit the red subscribe button, button and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on, on the road to 50K. And we cannot get there without you guys. All right. right. Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Belgian chocolate, Everyone made popular chocolate, worldwide man. in part by companies such as Godiva and Newhouse, is sometimes referred to as the best chocolate in the world, mm. as long as you don't ask anyone from Switzerland. But there's more what? to this delectable chocolate than meets the taste bud. Here are 11 facts you may not know about Belgian chocolate. I like this. Belgian chocolate dates back over 400 years to when it was first introduced in 1635 in northwestern Belgium. In time. the early days of its introduction, <laughs> chocolate making was mostly a sideline of pharmacists who sold it as a tonic or marketed it as a medicine. This medicine is what chocolate? we now consider hot chocolate. Unlike other chocolates produced around the world, chocolate. Belgian chocolate is made using 100% cocoa butter for the fat content of their chocolates. Yeah. This is different from many other chocolate manufacturers who may add in other vegetable fats while producing their chocolates, mm. thus changing the taste of the final product. First introduced by Jean Newhouse II in 1912, Belgian pralines are different from the traditional praline you may find in the United States or France. Unlike the traditional American praline originating mm. in New Orleans and made with a combination mm -hmm. of brown sugar, butter, cream, and pecans, Belgium I gotta say, you guys, but if you date back when our other channel, Life With Them, we have a cool video for you guys to check out where we personally make pralines with a special visitor. You guys gotta go check yeah. that video out, man. I seen your face though. Cause. Because this is the second video mm -hmm. where there's a lot of similarities with the way that we cook and yeah. the way that Belgium cook. Right. Pralines. Really? You think there's more salty though? I don't know. Huh. But let me find out we got some Belgian uh ancestors. Hmm. Okay. And pralines are soft center chocolates so with a chocolate shell. It is to further yes. confuse things. In America, those types of chocolates are sometimes referred to as truffles. Truffles. But we'll truffles, save yeah. that explanation for some other time. Another notable Belgian invention is the Balaton box. Designed by Louise Agostini, Newhouse's wife, this particular box revolutionized the chocolate industry. When first introduced, Belgian pralines were wrapped in paper when they were purchased by a customer. This offered very little protection for the chocolates and also hid their sometimes exquisite designs. Seeing all of the work and care her husband put into creating the Belgian praline, it could be assumed that Louise admired her husband's efforts and she felt compelled to design a specific box to put the pralines in that prevented them from damage while also showcasing. Can we give it up for the husband and wife duo? Come on now. Hey, you know what? Can I was about to say something about, not the husband, but something similar to that. Like, because if you think about it, a lot of great people are named like their name is the product mm -hmm. or their name is the company yeah or their name is the shoe mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like a lot of greats so i'm just throwing it out there now how you had just said it let's so, let's give it up for the husband and wife being helpmates she revolutionized chocolate packaging mm. the husband made the chocolate she made the packaging but and y'all, we have Sienna on the side. We do. <laughs> so that's She's why Deanna keeps looking yeah. to the side. Attractive designs. Balaton comes from the French term ballot, meaning small package of goods. Right. Belgium didn't become a true net exporter of chocolate until the 1960s. Yeah. As prior to that, they mostly still imported with brief exceptions. The chocolate the real growth, however, started the chocolate, the chocolate and has boat. grown exponentially ever since. 
In 1894, Belgian law actually dictated the composition of Belgian chocolate. In order for it to carry a Belgian chocolate label, chocolatiers oh, must elephant. use a minimum of 35% pure cocoa mm -hmm. in production. There is also a ban on artificial, vegetable, or uh -oh. palm-based fats in all products that carry the oh, Belgian chocolate, chocolate wouldn't make label. it down there. A yeah, major I innovation say that. I think in we got 1925 by the Calabot family was the discovery of a method to produce, store, and transport chocolate, known as uh -oh. chocolate coverture. This product filled the growing needs of bakers and chocolatiers in the region. Previously, chocolate needed to be refrigerated and reheated to a usable form for the manufacture of other chocolate products. This form of chocolate became a major factor in Belgium's success later on. Located in the village of Vies, Belgium is home to the world's largest chocolate factory, the Kalabat factory. Based on production figures, they produce a whopping 1,000 tons of chocolate per day, Ooh, that looks or so good. about 350,000 tons of chocolate per year. However, mm. you can't buy Calabot chocolate in stores as they are strictly business to business, meaning they supply okay. all of their chocolate to other manufacturers. The Calabot factory even produces kosher chocolates and has their own on site chocolate academy. Mm. There are over 2,000 chocolate facilities in Belgium from major factories to small shops. Talk about a sweet place to live. Oh. Speaking of sweet places, the Brussels airport is the largest seller of Belgian chocolate in the world with 2.8 kilograms or about six pounds of chocolate sold every minute. Now that's a lot of chocolate. The designation Belgian chocolate was a debated term for a while. With the international appeal of Belgian chocolate and the move to more international operations for many companies. So obviously there can never be too much chocolate. Obviously. Obviously there can never be too much chocolate. This became challenging to define. In 2003, the culmination of a 30 year dispute between countries to define chocolate known as the chocolate wars resulted in European regulations for chocolate that was actually a lower standard than what Belgian chocolate was known for. The Belgian government had already unsuccessfully attempted to address these concerns. However, after the European regulations were in place, Belgian chocolate companies themselves adopted the Belgian Chocolate Code that established higher standards that must be met in order to be called Belgian chocolate. Baby, one thing about it, two things for sure. After watching this video, don't play with no Belgian chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay, they don't play about their chocolate. They have standards. You want some chocolate, mama? They have standards, okay? You can't call it Belgian chocolate unless you meet their standards. <laughs> want some chocolate? And we heard that from America's chocolate to you all's chocolate is a real different culture shift. Yeah. Like taste buds and everything is just going to go crazy. You feel me? So we want to know the difference between it. Um, obviously, if you guys has like maybe one of the best chocolates in the world. Yeah. Biggest factories in the world. They don't use the oils that we use. Yes, non-fats. Yeah, so non -fats. I'm excited to see what that tastes like. One thing that was shocking to me, I kind of knew this, but when they say chocolate is a health benefit. Oh, um, yeah. The cocoa, was it? Yeah. When they make the hot cocoa. It's then medicine. Medicine, yes. That was the weird the word to say medicine. And then they also have chocolate to where you can have to freeze it and then reheat it to use it. So it's like, I don't see chocolate ever expiring. Right. Like, it's, right. it's infinite. So, um, what I was going to say. So, yeah, stop telling y'all children that they can't have chocolate because they're sick. Because mm -hmm. 400 years ago, they were able to have chocolate. <laughs> you, don't they call chocolate cake the devil's cake? That's that's a type of cake. Oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's a type of cake. I heard someone say that once, like, stop eating the devil's cake, the chocolate. Like, because it's not good for you or whatnot. But, hey, obviously, it has a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. Coco is good for you. Coco is good. Yeah. So we hope you all enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification turn bell. On. We have enabled our super thanks if you like to support the channel that way. And our mailing address is in the description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace.